So recently, there's been a lot of talk about how phones in the U.S. have become a bit stale, kind of iterating year after year, and specifically with the camera hardware, all making subtle iterations, while we're seeing other international phones, like the ones from China, seemingly getting superior hardware. Now, there's of course two main focal points of a camera. You have the hardware and you have the processing. So this got me wondering how important the hardware actually is and how these cameras actually compare. So in this video, we'll take a closer look at the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and the Oppo Find X7 Ultra. And in case you can't tell, the camera is kind of a, a main focus of this phone, specifically the hardware. There's some pretty big and impressive sensors all the way around this phone. In fact, I think it's the first phone to have two periscope lenses on there. So I was interested in this video, but this phone is not available here in the USA. So Oppo was nice enough to send this over and this video was made in partnership with Oppo. So before we get into sample photos, to get a better idea of what I'm talking about with the hardware difference, let's start off with the specs of these phones. They both have an ultra wide lens, which is 0.6X. Now this may sound similar, but Oppo's is 50 megapixels and Samsung's is 12 megapixels, but the sensor size is also also drastically different. One divided by 1.9 inches is the sensor on the Oppo, which is about a half inch sensor, and Samsung uses one over 2.55, so a smaller sensor. Oppo also has a larger aperture, f2.0, compared to 2.2, which again is a fraction. It sounds weird that 2.2 would be smaller than 2, but it is, and so that combination, you would expect a larger sensor and a larger aperture to let more light in. And there's some benefits to letting more light in. For one, you would expect to have more of a natural blur, Two, of course, you're going to expect better low light performance. And three, you would expect to have better dynamic range, being able to see the brightest and the darkest spots in a photo and expose them both properly so you can see them in the end result. So that's something we're gonna look for on the ultra wide lens. That's kind of a theme for many of the other lenses as well. These both have four lenses on the back, but the primary rear lens, Oppo is using the new 50 megapixel Sony second gen one inch sensor. So one inch is a pretty large sensor on a phone. And for you nerds out there, so this is the LYT900 sensor. And they also have a custom lens on here, which is intended to reduce uh, the reflections by 50%. So again, we'll keep an eye out for that later in the video as well. But that, again, 50 megapixels, one inch sensor, compared to Samsung, which has 200 megapixels on the main sensor, which again is substantially higher, which we would expect to see improvements with that. But the sensor size is one over 1.3 inches. So it is a smaller sensor, despite having a higher megapixel count. So that's gonna be a really interesting trade-off we check out throughout this video. But then the 3X lens. This is probably the biggest difference between these two phones. This is substantially, honestly, just the hardware superior on the Oppo. So this is actually a periscope lens on the Oppo. We're getting one over 1.56 inches, uh, while Samsung has one over 3.5, which means the sensor on the Oppo 3X camera is about 300% larger than that on the Samsung. So if we're going to see any differences in low light noise or clarity or detail or dynamic range on any of these, it is absolutely going to be on the 3X. We're gonna keep a really close eye on that in this video. In addition, the 3X lens on the Oppo is 50 megapixels with an f2.6 aperture. It's the IMX 890 in case anyone was wondering. And Samsung has a 10 megapixel, so one fifth the megapixel count and an f2.4 aperture, so slightly larger aperture. And for anyone wondering what that sensor is, that is the IMX 754. Again, Sony sensors across the board on these cameras. And then of course we have the super telephoto lens, the, the most zoomed in you can get on these phones. You have a 5X telephoto lens on the S24 Ultra, and we have a 6X telephoto lens on the Oppo. So for this comparison in this video, I'll usually show them both at 6X. Sometimes it'll be 5X on the Samsung and 6X on the Oppo, but you'll get a good idea of how they look because 5 and 6x is so similar. Now, both telephoto cameras on here are 50 megapixels uh, with one over 2.5 inch sensors. And because they both have similar hardware on the max focal length, I think that's going to be the most interesting one to see how different the processing actually is on these phones. All right, so let's get into the photo test. I just went on a quick little trip this past weekend. It was like a Christmas present. Uh, my wife and I, instead of getting each other physical stuff, we just like go on a little trip. So we went on a weekend trip to the Virgin Islands, found a nice cheap flight. And I thought this was a great opportunity to test out both of these cameras in many different environments. So starting off in New York City, where I flew out of, look at the red on the Macy sign on the top right. It's way more saturated on the Oppo photo. Uh, Samsung was really struggling with the reds. Also look at my skin tone, was substantially more washed out on the Samsung. So in this photo, 
I think Oppo with the Hasselblad tuning uh, definitely did a better job. Now, Samsung did a better job of catching the focus here, but again, the red was less saturated. I don't know why Samsung seems to have really desaturated reds here. But in a wide angle shot, you're going to notice that the shadows are darker on the Oppo and more lifted on the Samsung S24 Ultra. But with that larger lens, remember I said the dynamic range is going to be cleaner. So if you look at the palm on the background in this one, not only is it going to give you more of a natural blur on the Oppo, uh, but also it is less like a, a fake HDR look uh, in less computational photography because the lens is able to capture more of the dynamic range natively uh, before doing any processing. But again, Samsung did lift the shadows a little bit more. Now, looking at a wide landscape, honestly, these both did a fantastic job. I love the way this photo looked. Um, you're going to notice, however, in all of these shots that Samsung tends to be a little bit warmer, more like the iPhone colors on a photo, while Oppo tends to be a little bit more of cooler colors, which does, in a situation like this, make the water look a little richer. Um, here you can see the ultra-wide lens. They both did a really good job of not having uh, any distortion. Samsung caught less of a glare from the sun, which I thought was nice, but again, they both did a really fantastic job here. Zooming into 3x, again, you're getting more of a rich blue as well as more contrast in the trees with the 3x lens here across the board, really. Whereas Samsung is a little bit more of a flat photo. They lift the shadows more, they drop the highlights, and they have more of a warmer tone, even with the 3x. Zooming into the 5x or the 6x, rather, right here, we're seeing a lot of color. This looks really nice. And similarly, Samsung is kind of on very consistent among their lenses. Both are consistent on their lenses, and I think that's impressive. And then zooming into 10x, you can see this is still a fantastic, very usable photo. And this is why I really like the periscope lenses on these phones, because you can zoom into 10x and still have a great shot on either one of them. Um, it's going to be very consistent, very, very usable, tons of detail. And now probably my favorite category to compare here, the portrait mode. Now, these phones both have three great focal lengths for portraits, the first one being 6x. And as you can see here, they both do a great job from just a, they look pretty similar, right? You see a little bit more of a blur on the Oppo, a little bit less on the Samsung, but that of course is adjustable within your settings. If we zoom in, however, this is where we start to see a little bit of a difference uh, in the resolution, the detail captured on my face. So zooming in quite far, you can see substantially more detail retained with the Oppo. However, they both did a fantastic job with edge detection. They both have individual hairs captured. In fact, Samsung might even have a slight edge here. It's hard to tell because the background is slightly less less blurred here, but overall, both fantastic photos. However, we also have the second focal length being 3x. And of course, that's kind of a common theme between these two phones. The 3x lens on the Oppo does have substantially higher resolution and a larger sensor, so we would expect to see less noise. And sure enough, as you zoom in, even though once again, they both do a great job with edge detection, they both do a great job blurring the background and kind of having a realistic depth of field, as you can see on the grass below my feet. Uh, but if we zoom in on my face, uh, definitely substantially more noise on the Samsung. But if you're not zooming in that far, like I said, they both are quite impressive with their processing. And then, of course, we have the standard wide angle lens. This is the one that I would definitely use the least um, because it's a wide angle lens. Things are a little bit more distorted. But once again, these both do a really solid job. But if we zoom in, you can see uh, Samsung actually captured a lot of detail here. The higher megapixel count on the sensor is likely the reason for that. Um, and they both have really great edge detection. Once again, um, good colors overall. I think this is actually Samsung's best portrait. So realistically, I would say Oppo probably won the first two focal lengths for portraits, but Samsung won the wide angle. But of course, you can vote below in the comments and let me know which one you like best. Looking at the standard lens here, I want to stop on this photo for a minute because this is going to be, I think, the biggest difference between the main sensors on these phones. You can see Samsung tries to make it look like daylight. This was incredibly dark at this time. Like, I think this is like 9 p.m., uh, whereas the Oppo, I think, looked way more natural. It was a little brighter than it looked to my eye, but I think in a very tasteful way. Like, I think this is a really nice photo. Uh, the sand was the right color. There's a lot of detail there. Uh, the clouds looked really good. And again, because it's a cooler photo, less of a warm tone, when there's water and sky around, it, it, it tends to be a little bit better in my opinion. But that doesn't mean it's going to be better for everything. We'll see some examples of where Samsung definitely pulls ahead. Now, in a more well-lit, uh, dark environment, you can see much more similar comparison here between these two. Uh, you can comment and let me know which one you think looks better. The ultra-wide, a little bit noisier, I think, on the Samsung around the lights on the top right. 
but nonetheless pretty similar the 3x of course having that larger sensor this is where you see the massive difference much much better on the oppo now here i like the color of the sand a little bit better on the oppo but i like the color of the island a little bit better with the s24 ultra then with a macro shot uh, they both did a great job blurring the background very very naturally uh, they caught they caught focus very well uh, and we can really do a uh, macro with basically any lens on these cameras so with the standard wide angle lens they both did a great job i think samsung was a little bit closer uh, with this one going to the 3x you're getting more of a natural blur because you have a larger sensor for the oppo which i think looked really good on the 3x and then 6x i mean they both did a really similar job here that's going to be a matter of preference on which color you like better just going on a random hiking trail again you'll see that samsung lifts the shadows up if you look at the bushes in the middle of this photo definitely a lot lighter on samsung uh same thing with the feathers on this chicken here so now going to a nice little beach photo i think the colors of the green on the palm are a little richer on the oppo but samsung does make the shadows brighter and kind of more of a flattened display so you can see everything on here including the darker shadows the ultra wide again they both do a great job the 3x lens uh once again you're seeing kind of a warmer color versus a darker uh, bluer tone which makes the water look richer which in this environment is an advantage i think but here i think is a really interesting one i want to stop on this photo for a minute if we look at first of all the man on the boat if he was the subject he's a little bit darker which i think is a more natural like the oppo looks a little bit more like a dslr camera actually would uh, where the man is not nearly as visible he is in the shadow whereas samsung flattens everything makes the man a lot brighter and so if he is the subject of the photo you may prefer the samsung photo in this in, in this case but if we look at the the trees and the villas in the background on the left side of this photo here we're seeing uh, a little bit more contrast with the oppo a little bit more of a darker green with those trees where samsung once again has a warmer tone here and the water once again is more of a turquoise on the oppo and a little bit more uh, warmer in tone on the samsung but this is going to be a preference right so some people might really like the the brighter photo on the samsung uh, version here and some people might like more of the natural colors that we're seeing on the find x7 ultra and then looking at this photo right here this is really quite interesting because this is very computational here i was in a very dark room taking a photo uh, and there's an extremely bright window there so samsung didn't really show everything outside uh, because it was so bright outside uh, but going outside these photos are strikingly similar like just the wide angle lens both captured i think they both did a great job with this both very accurate the sky is very very blue on the oppo on the left uh, and the trees are a little bit less saturated on the samsung samsung's been kind of dialing back their saturation over the past couple of years now looking at the wing uh this is really just a, a matter of preference again they both look really good samsung has a little oversaturated uh tip of the wing right there whereas oppo has a little bit a blown out tip of the wing there so it's going to be more white but a little bit too bright in my opinion i think somewhere in the middle would be the perfect shot the telephoto lens on both of them look fantastic and then here's where you're going to see the benefit of the larger sensor this is a little bit later in the flight it was darker and when we switch over to the samsung photo you'll see it's a darker photo overall a little bit more noise on the top uh the top right and top left corners but more of a moody photo uh maybe that's what you're into now getting into some product photography these both did a fantastic job you're seeing a little bit more of a natural bokeh on the find x7 pro this is not portrait mode this is just the 3x lens and then the 6x right here again really nice natural bokeh on both of the photos really um just gonna be a subtle difference now the wide angle shot this was a really tough one because you have a very bright marker high contrast there and really the background's very well blurred on both of them i think they both nailed this one once again with the 3x lens and then going into to the 6x right here uh, i think they both did a fantastic job you can barely see the background it's so well naturally blurred so as you can see throughout this comparison uh, there's a really strong combination of both computational photography and hardware kind of combining to give you a good photo and you really start to see the differences when you go to those extreme limits like very low light very zoomed in very high motion things like that and that's where you start to see some advantages with the superior hardware because there's only so much you could do computationally when you're dealing with such a difficult difficult environment but between these two phones they both did a fantastic job if you're in the us you can't buy the oppo find x7 ultra but i'm excited to hopefully see some of that hardware work its way into other phones out there whether they are samsung or iphones because as of right now it does seem that in many situations the hardware on the oppo find x7 ultra is superior to that of 
phones like the Samsung S24 Ultra. With that said, they both take fantastic photos and they both have their own strengths in different environments.